Hello, this is Danpro. Welcome back to my train rigging tutorial series. We are in part four and we're going to finish up the drivetrain here. So we're going to do all this interior stuff that's moving around here. Uh, it's going to be pretty fun. It's actually not very hard. Um, it looks like there's actually a, a lot going on there. Let me just get correct layers open here so we can look on the interior and watch this animation. So it looks like there's a lot of moving parts in here, and there is, but uh, if we actually break everything down to its basic elements and just figure out where things rotate from and place bones where the head, because remember the head is where the bone rotates from, uh, in these um, at these rotation points, and just do some simple parenting and uh, some simple constraints. We're only going to use IK constraints for all this. Um, it's actually going to be pretty simple. So let me just hide some of these meshes and get them out of the way, because if we break this down, and, um, actually. Like I mentioned, it actually comes pretty simple. Let's just hide some of the stuff that we've already have rigged on the other side. And we can just look at um, these two arms here and these um, offset points here. This drive link and this rocker that's connected to this other piston up here. So when we break it down like this and start hiding everything, now it doesn't look quite so bad. So let's take this and... Um, break down the rig here a little bit you hide some of these layers just so we can uh, and actually even some of these bones just so we can take it one step at a time here and figure out uh, what's going on here so uh, just by staring at this for uh, a little bit um, it was easy for me just to figure out all the different rotation points now I did find an error in it now I have this rocker selected if you see this point down here um, you'll notice that it's kind of sliding through the mesh a little bit. Now, I actually spent way more time than I should have uh, trying to figure out what was causing that error. Um, spent a lot of time online trying to find schematics and things like that. Um, and ultimately, I just wasn't able to get the information that was going to allow me to figure out uh, what was causing that that error, whether it was uh, a mesh that was just uh, created at the wrong scale or, or multiple meshes or there's just a wrong pivot point somewhere. Um, Ultimately, what I came up with is the best reference that I actually had for this train model was the one that was already in front of me with Train Boy's original rig. So, um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to fix that error, um, but I'm just going to, in order, uh, in the interest of time and my own sanity, I'm just going to get on with this and uh, use his uh, Train Boy's original rig um, to solve this problem. So, basically, what I'm going to do. Um, and how I'm going to approach this is I need to figure out how to set up this first arm and I'm going to build everything off of that. So so the important areas, like I mentioned, are always going to be where things pivot from. So notice that we've got this mesh that's kind of offset. It's doing this offset of, uh, um, of whatever our wheel is doing here. So if we just go to frame one here and tab in edit mode, let me just go to wireframe so you can see that. So I just selected this outer loop of that um, inner mesh. Maybe I should have mentioned that these are two different meshes. We have the arm here and then we have this interior one. So in edit mode there, um, shift S, cursor to selected. That's very easy to find that center point and I just went back to my armature and added a bone so its head was at that offset point. So rinsed and repeated for this other um, arm, the interior of that, if I can get that mesh there. And it's not going to let me click through this. Um, anyways, just uh, rinse and repeat of the other side so I could find the center of that uh, secondary arm, this lower one here, and uh, add a bone for that. So these two bones are actually going to be uh, end up being um, our targets for a couple IK chains that are going to make our arms uh, point in the right direction. So these can just simply be parented to the wheel bone that we already have set up with the constraints here to um, rotate and that's going to give us our offset for these arms all right uh, next up is the important end uh, we'll just kind of work our way back from this is an important pivot point and we'll just work our way back that arm needs to come out and point at um, this drive length here has a bolt that goes through it so we need this is going to be an important pivot point. We know that that is a connection between this mesh and the arm mesh. And I can't select it here. Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. If I 
grab it. All right, this one and this one. I've got a bolt that goes through there. Uh, next up is we just need to figure out um, where this kind of rotates from here. And that is where that error, I think, um, is. But I didn't have any uh, better way uh, other than to use um, Train Boy's original rig here. And you can see all this stuff here. Uh, it's basically this point right here, at the top of this chain. If I just go to side view here, you'll notice that both of these um, kind of line up there. So I just selected this tip, shift S, cursor to selected. Now I had this point in space on the Y and Z, but I just needed to slide it over so I could be in line with these meshes here. That's actually pretty easy to do. I can actually, since I've already added that um, bone right here, I can go to edit mode and copy the head X position. This is, um, when you're in edit mode, you're always looking at the, um, real world transform so copy this and then paste it to my 3d cursor and now I've got that point and I know this is where the rotation point um, for this main arm here so everything is going to be built off of this so it's pretty important um, to get this uh, point correct alright now simple IK chain again the head up here down to our pivot point which is the bolt and then back to our target which is the offset parented to that wheel. RK and IK um, chain let me go to uh, chain length of two. Now the first bone in that chain is actually parented let me actually hide uh, the old rig here because we don't we won't need it anymore from this point. It's parented to our engine main bone that way when we move it around that's gonna take it with it Again, pointing to this uh, point on the drive length and where it bolts together to the arm. And then secondary one pointing back to uh, this target. So uh, the mesh parenting is going to be this piece here, the central piece will be parented to this. The arm itself, this piece will be parented to the second bone in the chain and nothing actually gets parented to that. It's just there um, to um, for the swing for um, this point. That was actually not too bad. Probably my explanation made it a lot worse, but let's unhide the next section that makes the lower arm work here. Now again, we're going to have uh, the important uh, pieces for this lower arm is this drive length the, the the two bolts that are going to um, basically set the length and the distance between these these two meshes so I just added a bone uh, with the head up here and tail at the at the bolt section down there and extended um, that next uh, bone back to this central point over here so again it's an IK chain with chain length of two now this bone here which is basically representing these two pivot points um, is simply parented to this bone um, so when this moves on in and out that pivot point is going to move in and out as well and then the IK constraint for this lower um, is just the lower um, bones here are just going to point back to that offset now this actually gives us a good bone to parent our uh, local driver link to so I went ahead and done that already and now we've basically got um, everything that we can build the rest of this off of so uh, this rotation point is actually one of the most important um, bones for this setup so now that we have it rocking this piece back and forth now everything else is basically going to be relative to that so let's turn on another layer here actually have a few more bones already set up you unhide everything all right so let's hide let me just hide these temporarily so one thing left to do is this rocker uh, now we can just tab in here obviously use the mesh here and set a bone to rotate at this point this is going to be a stationary point so this bone is just parented to our uh, engine main bone 
so it stays stationary and moves with it wherever it goes and we just need to figure out a target for it so this is going to be a single um, chain IK if we go to frame 1 basically all I did was use this drive length mesh I selected these um, tips of this, these bolts that are going through there shift S cursor to selected to find that average center point and you'll notice this is where I added this bone to so I did just slide it over so again using my 3D cursor I found the X position here control C control V and now I have that perfect wheel line position to add that bone now let me just turn on I don't need to turn on that layer again so remember everything is basically going to be built off of this bone now which is controlling this rocker so uh, this target is just simply parented to that and now this IK chain length of one is just pointing um, this mesh which is parented to it at that point now again this is showing off a little bit of that error that uh, I wasn't able to figure out because of this point um, but we're gonna just forge ahead here and uh, live with it it's not really that noticeable um, next up is going to be this dr drive rocker so this is actually a pretty simple setup as well we have a simple uh, bone set up in the center of this mesh basically the center of that circle right there we have a target bone which is actually centered here if we go to side view and go to shift S cursor to selected what does that look offset oh there we go my view must have just been off a little bit so we have this lower um, target bone to have this pointed at again this point is parented to this drive length bone here the one that's con controlling this mesh here and that's always going to make that point relative just rock that back and forth now we can simply just point this bone the chain length of one at that and we have a rocker set now one more chain of bones here we have three bones here parented in a chain and this is just a setup we did uh, it's identical to the one in our last tutorial where we have uh, three bones for an IK chain the first one this bone is not allowed to rotate in any direction it's allowed to stretch this one is not allowed to rotate in any direction and it's not allowed to stretch which means it's just going to move back and forth uh, based on these two positions here and that's going to give us our uh, bone re that we can uh, parent this mesh to and also this bone um, I did allow it to um, rotate on its x-axis and that is because um, the target is actually um, doing a little bit of an arc here so if we actually turn that off maybe we won't even be able to see that it's pretty it's pretty subtle you can see it's kind of going up and down there if I turn that on it'll stick directly so uh, just looking at this mesh there is uh, because of these pins on this mesh I think that there's supposed to be a little bit of play in that rod and the target for this these chains is a bone set at the center of this upper mesh and it's just parented to this one so here's the IK um, target for this chain this piston is parented to th um, this IK that's rocking back and forth giving it that perfect motion so I uh, haven't actually introduced any new constraints with this um, but there we have it uh, all that interior stuff is done um, if you just look at things logically and work things back I know it's actually it's not logical because um, the way things work in real life where a piston would push something forward and you just don't have those kinds of constraints in blender um, we're always simulating things by pointing at stuff and um, copying locations rotations or scales so um, after you've done this a few times um, it becomes a little nicer to do and you, I just encourage you to um, find some um, 
good rigs out there that have some mechanical rigging and uh, just kind of take things apart and see how they work. So in the next episode, in the next tutorial, we're going to get in and use one of my favorite constraints. That's going to be the action constraint. And uh, it would be nice to introduce something uh, new. It's my favorite constraint because you can do so many uh, cool things with it uh, based just on your um, ability to key frame different things or different bones in the rig. So that's going to be fun. Until then, good luck.